right, this should do it. This should do it. Merry Christmas. I guess this will qualify as the B side to the video. Good evening to all you sad, miserable, highly on bag holders. Don't feel bad, I'm one of you. Another monstrous day of validation is behind us. You know, the share price. Invalidating our decision to invest in Thomas and Company. A lot of talk about no orders, no customers, but I beg to differ. As I see it, we already have legions of paying customers. Who are they? You and I. We are the company's first customers. At least the way I see it. We are the adopters. We have put our money into the coffers of this company. Coffers, only one person as far as I understand it, has thus far benefited from in any meaningful way. Let me ask you something. Do you feel like a valued customer? I don't think you do, and neither do I. You see, I have a business, and here's what I do for my customers. I've been in business for about 25 years or so, 24 years to be exact, and uh, my business started in a small closet, tiny little desk, and uh, I was struggling the first few years. Long story short, I built a fairly su successful company, and at this point, I value my customers immensely. I know that I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today if it wasn't for my customers. And so I show this appreciation, this positive sentiment, sentiment to, my, to my customers any way I can. I do a lot of things for our clients, for our customers that our competition does not. And this is why I believe we stand out from the competition, we stand apart, and we have a significant amount of repeat customers. Uh, you know, we give them rewards, we give them a lot of freebies, a lot of extra benefits, upgrades, things like that. You know, we send out handwritten cards during holidays to our customers, a lot of small little things like that to show our customers how much we appreciate them. And do we, as Hylion's first de facto customers by way of being invest investors, do we feel that appreciation from Hylion, from Thomas Healy? I certainly don't. What has Thomas done for the most important customers his company has reeled in so far? Keep in mind, if all of us suddenly ceased buying their offering or their shares, if we all sold, all of us, every single one of us, every investor, it would be lights out, thank you and good night, just like that. With this in mind, it blows my mind the blatant disregard for our well-being, absence of even entry-level service to those first customers. Letters, emails, contacts sent out to, uh, to investor relations seldom, if ever, yield any response. Even a canned response, a generic autoresponder, nothing, not even that. It's as if we're all expendable bricks in a crumbling wall. I get it, this won't be an overnight success or failure. But does that justify an almost complete disconnect with the investor community? If I'm following an expedition to the North Pole, one I know is not a day trip, but rather may take weeks, if not months, of treacherous grounds to cover, I don't need colorful updates every day. But if even the most boring captain's log update once a week is conveyed, I'll feel like I'm part of the journey. I don't care if this week's update tells me the guide caught the, the, guide caught the flu or got the shits from eating frozen salmon and the trip is pushed back by a week. I just want to hear progress. Anything. Even if a delay is part of that progress. Tell me why. What, tell, me, tell me the why. Tell me the what. The when. The how. All of it, just enchant me, engage me, indulge me with the ins and outs of this long journey that we're all on. Essentially, the only consistent thing we get related to Hylion are the increasingly desperate hold on and don't let go videos that are starting to sound more like lyrics from 80s hair bands coming from a rapidly decreasing pool of faithfuls. The point is, none of this has to be this way. Even when markets are being battered, some companies thrive. Nowhere is it written that if the market blows, so must your business. I have a business, and contrary to all of my expectations, the crazier things got with COVID back in 2020, the more our business thrived. Sure, there are supply chain issues, so I'm told, but what effect does a supply chain issue have on our commander-in-chief, Sir Thomas Healy's, kowtowing to competitive forces 
instead of standing proud and tall and tell us, come hell or high water, he'll do all he can to deliver the goods. I don't need definitive statements that could lead to liability issues. Instead, just keep reaffirming your dedication to kick ass, to deliver, to lead, to, to, to thrive, to kick the competition's ass. Instead, the latest Yahoo interview, when asked about the debilitating stock price performance, an instant deflection is offered, followed by the kind of statement I would expect to hear from a diplomat at the United Nations General Assembly in Geneva, essentially telling us that the market will decide the best solution. Are, are you going to bet your money on a heavyweight boxer saying, well, there are many possible outcomes here and we'll let the fans decide who wins the fight? Or are you going to put your money on the guy who's got steam coming, coming out of his ears telling you that he's going to rip the, oppo the opponent apart? Of course that's the guy you're going to bet on, and that's exactly the kind of attitude I want to see out of a CEO. Remember, at the end of the day, Hylion's idea is almost irrelevant to the success or failure of the business. All that matters is who's behind the idea, who's in place to execute. Look around you, turn on your TV, browse YouTube. The most horrid shit can thrive, can succeed, if packaged and sold the right way. The music business is a prime example. Get a person with a guitar, a cello, or a piano who will write a melody and perform. Uh, music that would have kings and queens centuries ago moved. And today, only a few people will notice. But pack enough cellulite into skimpy shorts, pump some trite lyrics about hoes and pigeons, and suddenly YouTube servers are crashing because the masses can't get enough. Products are no different. Market garbage right? and it turns to gold. This is not to say anything about Hylion's product, but rather to underline how vital to the success of an idea the people behind that idea are. The right people can pull anything off. The wrong people, on the other hand, will struggle bringing to market even the most incredible and seemingly obvious solutions. I am beginning to question how qualified some of the upper crust of Hylion is to rouse continued interest in the company among its earliest adopters. You and I, the very people who are, who are the difference between electrifying tomorrow's fleets today and electrocuting our finances by having stuck our mouse pointer in the wrong outlet with this investment. Anyway, it's not all doom and gloom yet. Steve, although getting closer every day to making each and every one of us look like chumps with his call a few months ago that Hylion would be at $5 a share, we're still not quite there. But man, if we do bounce down to $5, giving him the last laugh on this one, it'll really show, show me Thomas Healy's ability to steer this ship through rough waters in a whole new light. I know. I know, I'm with you. Every time you see a new Hylion video, like me, you click, and maybe without being entirely aware of it, what you're really looking for is someone who will validate your decision to invest in this company. You're looking for a there there video, someone who some voice to make you feel better about something none of us feel good about at this point. There's really no new info coming out and there are only so many ways you can slice the same turd until you're left with nothing but a stinky mess. You know, they say beggars can't be choosers. And true to that sentiment, Hylion puts out a very brief drone video, likely filmed in one take, probably on one single battery, chopped into three scenes and posted online as their next PR offering. This is a billion dollar company. Mind you, by the time we post this, uh, it may very well be below that figure. Pumping up a visual treat that I, a complete amateur, could deliver in 30 minutes, filming and editing included, underlines the lax, passive approach the company appeared to have to the needs of their investor community. With the budget they have, hiring a media PR team to pump out content weekly, especially as the capitalization and sentiments towards the company continue to bleed, should be of utmost priority. But instead, we get a single scene, single shot drone video chopped into three scenes. It's like tossing food scraps to a starved stray dog. You know it won't take much at this point, and he'll wag his tail at anything you toss him. All I can say, all I can add, is, is that I... I feel regret. I feel regret for praising this company as I had in my videos in early 2021. Have I seen fundamental shifts in the variables that led me to invest? Absolutely. I felt the upper crust was I felt the upper crust in the company was investable. Today I no longer feel such conviction. 
whether it's their general ignorance of its most important clients, that being us, the investors, or the deference to competition, or the difficult to overstate sense of entitlement felt by the CEO by enriching himself to the detriment of each and every one of us by selling more of his shares, essentially using the market as an ATM without much regard for the obvious effect such actions have on an already debilitated stock price. These, you know, collectively, all these issues have changed my conviction in terms of whether or not this company is investable or not. I, I sometimes almost feel like maybe the stalker, maybe the ticker symbol, H-Y-L-N, might be better suited to be T-H-E-F, Thomas Healy Enrichment Fund. It, 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 it feels like that sometimes. You know, there is a plot twist to all this. I'm still holding on to my shares, but not because I feel I found my golden or rather green ticket, but simply because I'm too pissed off to let anyone have my shares at these prices. They say in times like these, fortunes are made. Indeed, but just as well, great fortunes are also lost. Don't forget the flip side of that coin. The impact that another generic canned earnings report in February may have on the collective portfolios of the company's most important clients, us, the investors, cannot be overstated. I certainly hope the pressure to deliver is felt each and every hour of every day in the chambers of Lord Healy. Are things tough for Hylion? Of course, the, odd, the odds are high, the obstacle is difficult to surmount. But this is precisely the type of situation where, where the most investable companies separate themselves from those who fade into oblivion. Remember, the strongest metal of all, steel, is forged in fire. It's time to forge. I will add this, I really don't care what happens after the next earnings report. All eyes are set on this next one. I believe it will seal the company's fate. At the next earnings report, it won't just be about earnings or orders, but to me, more importantly, about Thomas Healy's willingness, ability and courage to lead, to take charge, to instill faith amongst so many who have now lost it. If he fails on that front, the cracks on this green wall may reach a, may reach a state that's beyond repair.